a hot minute since I've done any traditional art, but today we're taking another crack at it. Rabbi sent me their art club subscription box, so today we'll be looking at what's inside and making art out of whatever's in this box. Grabby is an art and stationery supply company that started in 2021. They strive to use art to help mental health, especially during the pandemic, and even donate a dollar of each purchase towards the Grabby Art Fund, which donates art supplies to those who can't afford them. Special thanks to Grabby for sending me this art box to try out. If you want to get a Grabby Art Club box for yourself, I've left a link in the description, and you can use the code MADAMBERRY15 to get 15% off your order. So let's crack this thing open. Oh, this is their June box. So I don't know what's in this. I always feel bad ruining tissue paper. Do they have a postcard? Interesting, okay. You can enter to win $50 by coloring in the postcard. So I don't know what these are. Oh, is this black water? Wait, it's like a card. Okay, so it's like black paper that is a card. And there's three of them. That's kind of like a craft that you can do. What is this? Oh, it's a brush holder. This is really pretty fabric. Okay, what is this? Okay, well, I, I already know this is going to uh, be right up my alley. Ooh, look at these. Metallic. There's two canvases that I can see in here. There's a black canvas and a white canvas. So this is nice. I've actually never painted on black canvas. What are these? I mean, these colors are right up my alley. I don't know if I can show this off, but they're, they're semi-opaque. These are really pretty. We have what looks like a gold acrylic marker. I'm trying to figure out if it's acrylic or oil. This is a water brush. So basically this works by you fill uh, this part up with water and then you always have a reservoir of clean water to paint with, which is really nice. These are great for travel. Um, I have a very old one of these, but they're great for travel. A pen, is this a pencil sharpener? This pencil sharpener has a sphincter on it. <laughs> It's a pencil sharpener, but it, it has a little like sphincter on it. It's got a butthole. <laughs> uh, I assume that's actually really neat so that when you, I don't have a pencil, but when you are done, your pencil shavings don't all spill out of it. Really good travel pencil sharpener. Um, there's a lot of stuff in here. This is, this is a lot. I don't think I'm gonna be able to use every single art supply that's in here. I mean, there's already three different kinds of surfaces. I can see watercolor paper. So I I know I'm not gonna be able to use everything because I can't paint on three separate surfaces. So we have a really nice looking mechanical pencil. I don't know if, I think that's just graphite. I don't know if it's like a certain kind of graphite. No, it's just HB, but this will be nice for sketching. I do already have a sketch, but this will be good to transfer onto the final paper. And I like that it comes with a, a whole set of lead. What is this? Liberty colored pencils. All right, and then the last thing in here is a watercolor pad, which I think this is going to be what we'll paint on today. Although I would love in the future to use probably the black canvas because I've never painted on a black uh, gessoed canvas before. And I think it would be really interesting, especially with these bright colors. So that is everything in this box. You know what's interesting? They have a brush holder, but we didn't get like paint brushes aside from this one in here. Um, anyway, so this is everything in the box and it's a lot. <laughs> this is actually really cool. So let's get started on a drawing. I do have a sketch already planned because every time I try to sketch live, it just doesn't turn out well. You know what, actually, let's swatch all of these colors first. Let's swatch these. I'm really curious about them. All right, so the thing with metallic watercolors is that I tend to drop some water on them and then let them activate for a minute because they don't come right out of the gate 
full swing. So I'm gonna give this a minute and actually maybe I will grab these and while this is hydrating, I'll swatch these. I like this brush tip. It's a little bit soft, so you can get some kind of like line weight variation. It's a lot darker than I was expecting. It doesn't really match with the color on the like the preview color, so to speak. Okay, wait. How different are these two colors? Okay, so these these are actually almost the same color. This one is just a, a smidge darker and a little bit less saturated, I think. And then we have a purple. And the purple is actually pretty dark. So these, some of them run a lot darker than, than the preview. Like this looks very pastel, but then on the actual swatch, it's pretty dark. And then we will get to the metallic watercolors, the cyberpunk. So kind of the downside of using a water brush, whatever it's called, you have less control over the water because your brush is kind of always wet. You have significantly less control than a standard brush. Okay, so that's the first color. So that one is having a bit of a harder time coming up. And then this third, which is like more of a green gold. This one comes up nicely. Kind of the other thing about these uh, water brushes is that they can be more difficult sometimes to get totally clean. Like, I think I got some blue in there. It didn't even take me past the swatches to get a cat hair stuck in this. Um, <laughs> there's already a muffin hair in the swatch. Ooh, I can see them shifting with their duochrome. The top one is a bit more pink. The bottom one leans more green. They're both kind of on the gold side. And then the blue shifts between blue and purple. I don't know if you can see that. I'm also gonna real quick see how these paint markers look on black. I think I actually maybe like these paint markers more, oops, more on black than I do on white. These would actually work really well on the black canvas. You know what I totally forgot about? This guy. And then of course this is going to work really well on the black paper. And what's cool about like paint pens and stuff, this was already open, is that you can take this with the wet brush and make a gradient. You can also do that with uh, these and go in with a gradient as long as you're fast enough to get there before the paint marker dries. I'm gonna real quick make some swatches in my sketchbook of the pencils. Maybe it's the paper, but these could stand to be a little bit more pigmented. Yeah, I think the colored pencils have to be my least favorite uh, part of this bundle. Um, I don't know why this needs to be swatched, but I'm just gonna do it. It's a pencil. Transfer my sketch over to this watercolor pad. Okay, so this is very obviously single-sided paper. I wonder actually what it would be like to paint on the side with less texture. I might try that, maybe not today, but I might try that at some point. Cause there's one side with cold press texture and then one side that hasn't been pressed and it has less texture which might mean that it's not sized. Uh, sizing in watercolor is the process of putting a like, it's almost like a glue on the paper that makes the watercolors not instantly absorb into the paper. Like it, it, it makes it so that you're not trying to paint on a paper towel basically. Uh, so I wonder if this smooth side isn't sized. I actually printed out my sketch small enough. Okay, sketch is transferred. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use these paint markers kind of more like watercolor. And to do that, I'm going to scribble them out onto the like plastic thing. And then while they're still wet, I'm gonna pick it up with this 
try to put it down in like a lighter wash than if it was, you know, with the plain paint. So that's one of the neat things that you can do with paint markers is you don't have to use them as they are, as they come straight out of the pen. You can do stuff with them like this, where you use them a bit more like watercolor paint. Ooh, you know what I should have done? But I'm gonna just dab up some of this pencil line so it's not so prominent. This is the one of the nice things you can do with a kneaded eraser. Because you can kind of just not remove the pencil entirely, just make it lighter. All right, back to this business. The downside of working this way is that it tends to leave the uh, the painting a little bit streaky, just with the way that you have to dip back and forth between this like fast drying paint marker and the paper. This uh, watercolor brush, or the water brush, gets down to a very surprisingly thin point. Like this thin line all the way down at the bottom of the sketch. I'm very surprised I was able to fill in without um, overfilling it. One thing I'm noticing about this brush is that it kind of spurts kind of just give you spurts of water sometimes when you don't want it. So my goal right now is just to put in the shadows where the shadows make the most sense. And I'm just doing that on the same brush color as before, just uh, less, less diluted. This is very thirsty watercolor paper. And what I mean by that is that it is ready to absorb anything I put down on it. It's just like, give me water, which can make blending a little bit difficult. Man, if this is what I was missing out on the entire time I had my old water brush, I should have gotten a new one. I really should have gotten a new one way earlier because the amount of detail I'm able to get with this thing that I couldn't get on my old brush is astounding. The only thing I wish for these markers is if there was a way to attach them so that I don't have to like hold on to the lid. So I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do down in this section. I might just rely on the colored pencils for the like ultra glitchy section. Also, I don't think I explained, I'm using this as the, like the palette board because it is plastic and it won't absorb the uh, paint. If I were to try to use paper as a palette, the paper might just like simply absorb the paint that I put onto it, but this plastic thing will not, so. I'm using the packaging to my advantage. All right, so I wanna go in now with colored pencil and try to give it some like vaporwave lighting. So going in on the bottoms to make it look like there's a blue under light coming from below. Oh, it ate the pencil! Okay, how am I gonna get the lead out of here? Oh. That's gonna be interesting. So, already, the problem with this pencil sharpener is once you get... Uh, a piece of lead stuck in it... The sphincter doesn't let it come out. One pencil sharpener surgery later. Good to know that this will fall apart in the pencil sharpener. This kit 
didn't come with an eraser except for this teeny tiny one on here. So I'm just gonna use my own eraser because it's an eraser. It's not really an art supply. The face is so small. Oh my goodness. Make a detailed drawing, she said. It'll be fun, she said. I think that this would be cool if uh, it had like a 3D effect. I have no idea how to do that though. Like if there were parts that you could only see using 3D glasses, since I'm using like a red blue color scheme. However, I don't know how to make that happen. Or do I simply want to like kind of red blue split it? Oops, that's wrong. That was incorrect. I'm gonna see what it would look like with green. Because green really does just completely add a new color to the color scheme. I think that works. I think what I want to do, however, is the farther down I get, the more I want to separate the colors. And it is at this point that my brain fundamentally breaks and I cannot tell left from right anymore because I wanted the red to be more prominent on the right side and the green to be most prominent on the left side. But apparently my brain just couldn't comprehend that and I ended up putting pieces of color-coded washi tape on the different sides of my paper in order to help me attempt to help me uh, get that correct. But the effect that I'm attempting to go for here is kind of an RGB color split. So I wanted all of the separate colors to look like they're shifting either to the left or to the right, which is why I needed one of them to show up more on the left and one of them to show up more on the right. So what did I think of this box overall? I think there was a wide variety of products and I think there was a wide variety of uses for those products in different combinations. I've seen some other boxes and sometimes it seems like an art supply subscription box kind of has a narrow idea of what it wants you to do with it. So it'll be a very clearly themed box where there will only really be one type of surface for you to experiment on and kind of a limited way for you to be able to do that. Whereas this one, the fact that they give you three different types of surfaces, they give you the black cardstock greeting card paper they gave you the black and white canvases, and they also gave you watercolor paper, is a really interesting variety of different ways to use the supplies that they gave you in the box. As for each individual supply, I, of the ones that I used anyway, I liked all of them, except for the colored pencils. Honestly, they weren't the highest quality in my opinion. They were a little bit waxy, and the buildup that they left on the paper meant that they couldn't transfer as much pigment onto the paper. But I really liked the acrylic paint markers. They have this kind of soft tip that lets you get a wide variety of brush stroke uh, line weight variation within just that one tip. None of the paint markers that I have or that I've seen on the market have anything like that. So it was really cool to try something like that. And also the colors were right up my alley. I didn't use the duo shift um, metallic watercolor in this painting, mostly just because I couldn't figure out a way to incorporate it without taking away from the design that I already had in mind. But they are really interesting. I've used products like that before. They're really fun and I'd be interested in finding a way to use them in the future. The water brush pen made me realize that I probably should have gotten a water brush pen and replaced my old one way sooner because it, it's so much sharper and has such a better point on it than my old one did. Overall, I have no complaints. There was a lot of stuff in this box and it was all really neat and fun to play with. There was nothing in the box that was outright bad. Even the color pencils that I have a little bit of a problem with, they are not the worst colored pencils I've ever used in my life. Like they're not bad colored pencils. They're just not like the highest quality. They're not the kind of colored pencil that I would personally reach for. But like I said at the beginning of this video, if you would like to get the Grabby Art Club box for yourself, I have a link in the description and a code that you can use to get 15% off your order. This is how I'm gonna use the the gold pen here. I 
think I'm done. And here's a look at the final painting. I hope you enjoyed watching me take a look inside the Grabby Art Club box. I think this painting would make a good sticker. Speaking of, if you're somebody who wants to sell your art, take a look at my video about every product you can make using art you've already created. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, stay weird.